Hey guys, welcome back to Ranger Survival and Fieldcraft. I'm Andrew, and what I have for you today is Military Firecraft, the basic class as it was presented to me in Military Survival Training. Stand by. Firecraft, simply put, is the ability to start, maintain, and sustain a fire in a survival scenario or in a field environment for training purposes over a specific period of time to accomplish all tasks required using that fire. There are many purposes for fire. Some of the most basic purposes, warmth, creating a fire to get warm, dry out wet clothing and maintain core body temperature, cooking food over a fire. We can use the fire to cook food, make it safe to consume, and then eat that food for sustenance in a survival scenario. Boiling water over a fire. Boiling water is the most common way to purify or treat water to make it safe to consume, to stay hydrated in a survival scenario. We can also use a fire to create a signal for search and rescue, creating a small fire and placing green vegetation over that fire to create smoke for search and rescue to see. And then fire also serves as a way to make tools in the wild using that fire to either burn out bulls or create spears as well as a morale boost or a psychological boost keeping the boogeyman away at night. There are three principles to fire and that is the fire triangle, oxygen, heat, and fuel. There are four components to every fire. The first one being ignition or sparking source. With an ignition or sparking source we create a small amount of heat. That heat is transferred to our second component, which is tinder. Tinder is fine material capable of accepting that small amount of heat and allowing that small amount of heat to grow, usually into an ember. We then take that tinder and we apply our third component, which is kindling, which is small to medium size fuel that will allow that heat from our tinder and our sparking source to continue to grow into a larger fire. And then our fourth component is going to be fuel, larger sections of dead dry material thumb size in diameter and larger that we can add to our fire that will take the flame and burn for an extended period of time. There are 10 basic fire starting tools taught to the survivor. They range from easy fire lighting sources such as lighters to more difficult to use sources such as flint and steel, a mirror or a lens. A lighter is the most simple fire starting device there is. Instant gratification, instant flame, best used when tinder sources are marginal or require a flame to get that fire going. A ferrule rod is one of the best survival fire starting devices out there. Take a striking source or a device or the back of our knife, scrape the material off of the ferrule rod, generating sparks onto our tinder to get a fire going. The magnesium bar is good for tropical environments because it is ready-made tinder. We take the saw blade, scrape the magnesium from the body of the magnesium bar itself, flip it around to the striking source or a small ferrule rod embedded in the bar itself, striking the bar, generating sparks onto the magnesium. It ignites and burns at approximately 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Good to get a fire going, especially with marginal material. Matches are another easy way to get fire going with instant flame instant gratification. Matches are kept safe in a waterproof container like this match safe. We can then strike that match, put it into our tinder bundle or our fire lay and get a fire going. The aviator spark light was developed for pilots who found themselves in a survival scenario. It is simply a lighter but without the fuel or butane but only the wheelhouse with a small flint generating sparks when it is rotated. With the right tinder source, we can generate sparks and get a fire going very quickly. A lens, a magnification lens, or a Fresnel lens or Fresnel lens can be used to harness the sun's rays and focus the beam from the sun onto fine tinder, building a small ember in that tinder bundle, and then finally allowing the survivor to blow it into flame to get a fire going. A battery in steel wool can be used to ignite that steel wool, attaching the steel wool to the negative and positive terminals of that battery creates a short igniting the fine steel wool. Place that into a tinder bundle, blow it into flame, and we have fire. A fire piston is more of a primitive method for fire, but there are modern fire pistons made for outdoorsmen 
and survivalists. We simply take char material, put it on the tip of our plunger, place our plunger in the housing compartment for our piston, apply pressure down quickly and remove the plunger from the housing compartment, and the char material is lit, creating an ember. We take that char material or the ember, place it in a tinder bundle, and blow it into flame, we have fire. Flint and steel is a traditional method for getting fire going. We take a hard rock and strike it against a piece of high carbon steel, tearing off pieces of that metal from the steel. When those pieces come off the metal, they ignite very rapidly in air when exposed, creating sparks. Those sparks can land on fine material like our char. We take that char, apply it to a tinder bundle, and we blow it into flame, creating fire. A concave mirror or a makeup mirror from your local grocery store or convenience store can be used to harness the sun's rays much like the fire lens or magnification lens only this time the sun's rays are reflected and focused into a tinder bundle creating an ember and then we take that blow it into flame and we have fire there are a number of basic or easily found tinder sources that we can use with our fire starting devices to get a fire going in a survival situation. Natural materials such as grasses, plant fibers, the seeds from cattails, even fatwood can be used to get a fire going creating a tinder bundle or a bird's nest to create a long lasting flame to apply our kindling and fuel to to get a fire. Charred material that we superheat in a fire and prepare for a future fire, much like is done with the fire piston or flint and steel method, can be used to get fire going. Rubber or strips of rubber are gonna be excellent flame extender sources that we can use as tinder to transfer flame from something like a lighter to our tinder bundle or our fire lay to extend that flame over time to get marginal materials lit and our fire going especially in a tropical swampy or jungle environment man-made tinders designed to do what they do best and that is light fires in inclement weather or austere environments much like wet fire or small tinder sources that we can pick up at our local camp store work great for starting a survival fire Cheaper sources that we can use, cotton balls or cotton material, dryer lint, and Vaseline as a flame extender to act as tinder. We can place in a small bag, keep it with us. It is naturally water propellant with that Vaseline. Take it out, use it when we need it to get a fire going, and it's easily replaced by accessing our medical kit or our pharmacy, drugstore, or even our medical cabinet back home. Steel wool is commonplace, especially for Joes around the barracks cleaning the house. We can grab fine steel wool from a hardware store, from our local convenience store, wherever, and keep it in our kit or a small bit of it in our kit to get a fire going if we happen to find ourselves with only a few batteries. Hand sanitizer or any compound that is a majority alcohol-based can be used along with some of our fire starting devices like our ferro rod or our lighter to light that alcohol and the components of that compound to burn for a short period of time, transfer that flame to a tinder source and get a fire going. Duct tape, cargo tape, gorilla tape, T-Rex tape, 100 mile an hour tape, any sort of tape that we can pick up at our convenience store that may be issued to personnel or we can grab from a hardware store is going to be excellent tinder or flame extender especially from things like a lighter we can take off some of that tape bundle it up into a small ball light it with our lighter and then that flame will extend eating that tape long enough for us to put it in our fire lay and get a fire going a candle can be another source of tinder or another flame extender that we can use. Light the candle, transfer that candle while it's lit to our fire lay, light all of our material and get our fire going easily enough. Made that similar to cotton balls and Vaseline. A soldier can use their face paint because of the paraffin wax and petrol atom that's in that face paint, apply it to cotton material, and then using one of our fire lighting devices, light that cotton material. The face paint will act as another flame extender, increasing the longevity of that flame long enough for us to get a fire going.
besides our fire starting devices and our tinder sources we also need to understand the tools necessary to break down fire material out in the field or in a survival scenario items that could be part of our kit or our bushcraft kit field kit things that we can take with us or recreate or find as part of somebody else's kit or an emergency kit that we may just come across depending on our survival scenario it's time for us to build a basic fire pit there are two different fire pits that we can use the most simple is called a keyhole fire pit in which we take our e-tool or our digging stick and dig a simple hole into the ground with a shallow trench facing the direction of the prominent wind or we can use a simple rock pit where we place rocks in a circle and then place our fire in the center of that circle creating our fire pit Of the two fire pits, the keyhole fire is most preferred as opposed to other concealed fire pits. The keyhole will allow us to use our fire quickly for our survival purpose and then conceal that fire once we are complete. Now that our fire pit is complete and our materials are processed down to the appropriate size to start a survival fire, we need to build a proper fire lay. What we do is take dry material and place it on the ground to act as a barrier between our tinder source, our fire, and the earth and whatever moisture might be in the earth's surface to prevent that moisture from affecting our fire. We then place our tinder down. We can ignite our tinder and allow that tinder to transfer the flame to our kindling and then to our fuel. And we add more fuel on top of our fire once the flames have reached above the current fuel source on that fire. Now that we have a basic understanding of firecraft in a survival scenario with a wide variety of fire starters and tinder sources demonstrated as well as how to process material, create a fire, create a fire pit for that fire and then use that fire and sustain it long enough for survival priorities, you will now be given three examinations of which you must pass to advance to the next phase of training. Your first examination will be 30 minutes with man-made tinder source in which you must dig a concealed fire pit, start a fire, and bring water to a boil. Your second examination will be 20 minutes with natural tinder source, in which you must dig a concealed fire pit, start a fire, and bring water to a boil. Your final examination of which you must pass is 10 minutes with a natural tinder source, in which you must dig a concealed fire pit, start a fire, and bring water to a boil before the 10 minutes runs out. Failure of any one of these examinations will result in your removal from this training course. Do you understand? This is my favorite event of survival phase in SEER school, at least from my experience with the fire tests. Up until this point, we had spent a week, maybe a little bit more, out in the field eating just a rabbit or a chicken between our small team in SEER school and then whatever we could forage or find out in the woods when we weren't training. We were training constantly all through the night as well on land navigation, evasion skills, tracking, counter tracking, shelter building, more firecraft, treating or procuring water, signaling for rescue, medical aid, a lot of different tasks all the time and into the night. So by this point we're exhausted, malnourished, sleep deprived, and we have to complete this task. For this test, they pulled us out of our little camps and walked us to an area where there was some materials available, but we were only allowed to start with just a small amount of tinder in our hands. And so we had to dig a concealed fire pit or a keyhole or a cross using whatever equipment we had on our fighting vest. We had to gather all the fire materials from the immediate area and enough of those materials to get that fire going strong enough and then finally pour water into our canteen cup, suspend that over our fire using the two stick method and bring that water to a boil all in under 10 minutes, which is very doable. I think my time was very fast. I did it in approximately three to four minutes. Most guys completed it in about eight or nine minutes. But my strategy for this was to immediately put my tinder down in a safe location, run out, collect all the materials that I would need, a big hug size of materials, bring those back. 
I pulled out the issued survival knife that I was given. It was a Gerber FML, and I immediately dug a cross trench in the earth and then put my tinder in the center of that cross, ignited it, put the material over the tinder source, built my fire up, and then finally poured my water into my canteen cup, put it over the fire, and let it come to a boil to complete the test. All right, guys, that does it for this video. Firecraft military style, the basic class. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something from this video. If you like this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment in the comment section. I always appreciate your feedback. I want to thank you guys for everything you do for me, for this channel, for your likes, your views, your subscriptions, your comments, your feedback, and your shares. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.